after studying this module you will be able to understand the meaning of consumerism developments in the direction of consumerism or consumer movement in india rationale for the consumer protection scope and objective of consumer protection act of 1986 awareness of the rights of a consumer concept of consumer complaint limitation period appeal under cpa statutory provisions or process for consumer grievance redressal under the consumer protection act of 1986 introduction in order to maximize profits and wealth business organizations are often tempted to indulge in unfair and exploitative business practices such practices which are rampant in the market take various forms like selling substandard and defective products providing inadequate and deficient services manipulation of prices and black marketing making exaggerated claims about their products and services or misleading advertisements consumers form the largest segment of the country's population since every human being is a consumer yet in a transaction involving the buyer and the seller usually the former is the weaker party since he is less informed unorganized and has less bargaining power in view of these facts it becomes necessary for the consumer to be legally protected against such deceptive practices of the manufacturers and marketers of the goods and providers of the services consumerism in india widespread consumer exploitation and dissatisfaction have led to the emergence of consumer movement as a defensive force to safeguard the consumer interest an organized movement of consumers supported by the government is referred to as the consumerism According to Philip Kotler and Gary Armstrong 2009 consumerism is a social movement of citizens and the government agencies to improve the buyers rights and powers in relation to sellers Consumerism owes its origin to USA where in the 1960s when the consumers had become better educated products became more complex and potentially hazardous Ralph Nader took up the cause of consumers against the manufacturers and traders unethical and unfair practices thereafter president john f kennedy in 1962 declared that consumers had the right to safety to be informed to choose and to be heard since then many consumer groups have been organized and several consumer laws have been passed and almost all the countries of the world consumerism has two dimensions first legal protection to consumers against their exploitation by manufacturers and marketers of goods and services and second is the voluntary self help by the consumers through individual and voluntary organizations while the former exist in the form of legislative measures initiated and implemented by the government the latter is the action to be taken by the consumers at the gross root level numerous laws have existed in india for the protection and promotion of consumers interest for a long time they however dealt with the problem in a piecemeal manner a list of the major pieces of legislation containing provisions for the protection and promotion of consumer interest and which are currently in force is given in table 1 however in the absence of any unified and effective machinery for enforcement of these measures the aggrieved consumers were unable to exercise any statutory rights to seek redress of their grievances arising out of violation of the provision of these legislations the major developments during the recent years which can be said to be the milestones in the history of consumer movement in india are briefly indicated here passing of the consumer protection act of 1986 The real consumer movement started in India with the enactment of the Consumer Protection Act on December 24, 1986. The Consumer Protection Act, which is also known as CPA, was hailed as the most progressive and comprehensive socio-economic legislation in the country. Unlike the earlier laws which were punitive and preventive in nature, the provisions of the CPA are compensatory in nature. With the increasing awareness created by the government, consumer associations and the mass media the inflows of cases in the consumer court is increasing day by day table 2 exhibits the status of cases filed and decided since inception it sought to provide for better protection of consumer interest through speedy and inexpensive redress of consumer grievances by a three tier adjudicative machinery 
consisting of consumer courts set up at the district levels, state level and the national levels. Statutory measures for standardization and quality control. The central government took a major step to strengthen the standardization activity in the country by restructuring and reconstituting the former Indian Standard Institution known as ISI by the Bureau of Indian Standards now known as BIS, a statutory autonomous body set up on April 1st, 1987 under the Bureau of Indian Standard Act of 1986. The BIS is the interested with the task of formulation of national standards in respect of almost all industrial products, services and processes. In order to enable the consumer to identify products of daily use of acceptable quantity, a certification mark scheme known as IS mark scheme is operated by BIS. It provides a third party assurance to the common consumer about the product quality. The BIS entertains consumer complaints about the quality of products carrying the BIS standard mark and takes appropriate corrective measures to redress their grievances. Sport in voluntary consumer organizations. A large number of voluntary consumer organizations have been set up during the recent years with the number increased from about 80 in the mid 1980s to over 1500 in 2004. Some of these organizations have a well knit structure and are doing useful work in spreading consumer awareness and advocacy. These organizations include Consumer Education and Research Center, Ahmedabad, publishing a bi-monthly magazine, Insight, Consumer Guidance Society of India in Mumbai, publishing Kimath Monthly, Voluntary Organization in the Interest of Consumer Education, that is Voice, New Delhi, publishing Consumer Voice, bi-monthly, Consumer Coordination Council, New Delhi, publishing Consumer Network, quarterly, and Common Cause, New Delhi, Common Cause, publishing Common Cause, quarterly. Setting up of the Department of Consumer Affairs. It was only in 1991, in response to the persistent demand of the consumer activist and organizations that a separate Department of Consumer Affairs was set up by the central government as a part of the Ministry of Civil Supplies, Consumer Affairs and Public Distribution under a cabinet minister. Setting up of Consumer Welfare Fund In 1991, the central government set up a Consumer Welfare Fund in pursuance of the Customs and Central Excise Laws Act of 1991. The fund is not a part of the Consolidated Fund of India but is held in the public account in trust by the government. The Consumer Welfare Fund Rules 1992 provide for the utilization of the amount normally not exceeding rupees 3 crores to provide financial assistance to voluntary consumer organizations and for the general development of the consumer movement in the country ensuring increased people's involvement. Grants for the fund can also be made available on a selective basis for reimbursing legal expenses incurred by a complainant in a consumer dispute. Setting up of the product testing laboratory. In 1994, the country's first independent product testing and rating laboratory was set up at Ahmedabad, Gujarat by a leader consumer organization, namely Consumer Education and Research Center, CERC, Ahmedabad, with financial assistance from the industrial banks, LIC, GIC of India, the UNDP and the Union Ministry of Consumer Affairs with the technical collaboration from the Friedrich Norman Foundation of Germany. Initially, three categories of products like food, pharmaceuticals and domestic electrical appliances were taken up for testing. Product claims made by the producers are verified and deviations are subject to regulation under the relevant laws. While the food division of the laboratory has analyzed the carbonated beverages, tea, bottled water, honey and coffee, the pharmaceutical section has checked the quality of the different brands of pharmaceutical sold in market and some Ayurvedic preparations. In the electrical wing, the products on the testing line included immersion rods, mixies, toasters and hand blenders. On the basis of its quality test, the CERC also files complaints before consumer court against the manufacturers whose products are found to be substandard. The test reports are published in Insight, the bi-monthly magazine of CERC and in various newspapers. The New Competition Law 
the Competition Act of 2002, which has repealed and replaced the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices, that is MRTP Act of 1969, is intended to prevent anti-competitive business practices and regulate the business combination in order to promote fair competition in the best interest of consumers and the general public. The relevant enforcement agency, namely the Competition Commission of India, was formally set up on October 14, 2003. National Consumer Helpline, that is NCH, a significant initiative of the Department of Consumer Affairs was the launching of the National Consumer Helpline in coordination with Delhi University's Department of Commerce. The helpline was formally launched on 15th March 2005 on World Consumer Rights Day. Consumers from all over the country can access the toll-free number 1800114000 and seek the telephonic counselling for the problems that they face as consumers relating to various sectors including telecom, courier, banking, insurance, transport, electronic, automobiles, FMCG products and financial services. Their Jago Grahak Jago campaign has already made its mark in making consumers aware of the various consumer rights. It has lately shifted its location from Delhi University to Center for Consumer Studies at IIPA New Delhi. Development of Citizens Charters the citizens have a right to respect certain standards of performance and quality of the service from any organization, particularly when the system exists for them and is paid for by them. The Government of India, Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Grievances, introduced the citizens' charters as an important administrative measures in the ministries and departments and organizations having public responsive administration with efficiency on transparency and accountability. These charters incorporate the citizens' right and entitlements to public services, access the information and a time-bound redress of their grievances. Till January 2011, 131 citizens' charters has been prepared by the central government departments and ministries and 729 by 24 state governments or union territories of India. Setting up of consumer grievance cells in industries. Leading consumer goods manufacturing companies and certain public utilities like the Indian Railways and Electricity Companies or boards like NDPL, BSES and insurance companies like LIC of India, ICICI Prudential have recently set up the consumer grievance cells with nodal officers to look into the consumer complaints. The Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Confederation of Indian Industry, and certain other regulatory bodies including IRDA, TRAI and ASCI have also set up consumer grievance cells. Increased media interest in consumer issues. An important aspect of the consumer movement in India in recent years is the increased media interest in consumer problems. Besides regular columns in the Times of India and the Hindustan Times on consumer issues, Doordarshan telecast programs like Sangrakshan Ubhoktaka, the Department of Consumer Affairs has taken a multimedia publicity campaign, Jago Grahak Jago, video and audio spots of 30 seconds duration in English, Hindi and regional languages on consumer awareness about electronic balances, hallmark jewellery, maximum retail price, weights and measures, education, real estate, banking, ISI mark and consumer forums. Setting up of consumer clubs. In order to reach the younger population segment and strengthen the consumer movement in country, the government introduced the schemes of setting up of consumer clubs in schools and colleges. As per a study conducted by CCS IIPA 2010, out of 4.5 lakh educational institutions in 2001, only 7,345 schools, that is 1.63% have maintained consumer clubs. Unfortunately, due to non-availability or irregularity of financial supports, that is rupees 8,000 annually by the government, many of them have become dysfunctional. The Consumer Protection Act of 1986 The process of redress of consumers' grievance is provided under the Consumer Protection Act of 1986, the Consumer Protection Rules 1987 and the Consumer Protection Regulation of 2005. In order to plug certain loopholes in the law and to vest additional powers and functions with the enforcement agencies, 
The CPA was extensively amended in 1991, 1993 and 2002. Scope and Objective of CPA The CPA is intended to protect and promote the consumer's interest through the speedy and inexpensive settlement of consumers' disputes and to redress their grievances. Being a central legislation, the CPA extends to the whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. The scope of the act is very wide. It applies to all types of business undertakings, large or small, whether private sector or public sector or a cooperative society and whether manufacturer or trader and whether supplying goods or providing services. Moreover, it applies to all goods and services unless the same are expressed exempted from the purview of the act by the central government by a gazetted notification. Organizational setup. The organizational setup provided under the CPA has two wings. First, advisory bodies and second is the grievance redress agencies that is adjudicating bodies. Advisory bodies. As provided under the CPA, the Central Consumer Protection Council has been set up by the central government at the apex level and state consumer protection councils have been set up in each state by the state government concerned. These councils are envisaged to function as deliberative and advisory bodies. They consist of officials and non-official members representing various interests having a bearing on the subject of consumer protection. The consumer protection councils are intended to promote and protect the various rights of consumers. These rights include the following. First, the right to be protected against the marketing of goods and services which are hazardous to life and property. Second, the right to be informed about the quality, quantity, potency, purity, standard and the price of goods and services so as to protect the consumer against unfair trade practices. Third, the right to be assured, wherever possible, access to a variety of goods and services at competitive prices. Fourth, the right to be heard and to be assured that the consumer interest will receive due consideration at appropriate forums. Fifth, the right to seek redress against unfair and restrictive trade practices and unsculpturous exploitation of consumers. And sixth, the right to consumer education. Redress Agencies For the redress of consumer grievances, the Act provides for the setting up of a three-tier adjudicatory machinery at the district, state and the national levels. The three agencies are known as the District Consumer Disputes Redressal Forum, State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission and the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission and are briefly referred to as the District Forum, State Commission and the National Commission respectively. While the National Commission is set up by the central government, state commissions and district forums are set up in each state and district respectively by the state government concerned. The composition of the three redress agencies are briefly stated here under. First, District Forum. The District Forum consists of a president and two other members, all appointed by the state government concerned. One of the two members must be a woman. For appointment as the president, the person should be either a sitting or a retired district judge or should be qualified to be appointed as a district judge. For the other two posts of the member of the forum, one must be a person of ability, integrity and standing and have adequate knowledge and at least 10 years experience in the field of economics, law, commerce, accountancy, industry, public affairs or administration besides possessing other prescribed qualifications. Second, State Commission. Each state commission consists of a president and at least two other members, one of whom should be a woman. They are appointed by the state government concerned. For appointment as the president of the state commission, the person should be either a sitting or a former judge of the high court. For the other post of the members, the qualifications are the same as those for the members of district forums. Third, national commission. The national commission consists of a president and at least four other members one of whom should be a woman, they are appointed by the central government. For appointment as the president of the national commission, the person should be either a sitting or a former judge of the supreme court. The qualifications laid down by the appointment of other members are the same as those for the members of the state commissions and district forums. At present, while 629 districts of the country have a district forum each, 35 state commissions are functioning in each of the states and the union territories 
and located at the respective district headquarters or state capitals. The National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission commonly referred to as the National Commission is located at the national capital at New Delhi. Redress of Consumer Grievances The process of the redress of a consumer's grievance involves the filling of a complaint to the appropriate redress agency, hearing of the complaint by the agency and passing of the appropriate order on the complaint. This process is explained under the following head. First, who can file a complaint? Second, on what ground can a complaint be filed? Third, to whom can a complaint be filed? Fourth, what procedure is to be followed by the redress agency in disposing the complaint? Fifth, what relief is provided to the complainant? Sixth, where can one file an appeal if any against the judgment? Seven, how can the agency's order be enforced? These are explained as below. Complainant. Action before the appropriate consumer forum, redress agency, can be initiated by making a complaint against the goods sold or the service provided. Such a complaint can be made by any consumer, any registered consumers association, the central government or any state government, or one or more consumers where there are numerous consumers having the same interest or class action, or in the case of the death of a consumer, his legal hire or representative. Consumer. The term consumer is of prime importance and must be understood clearly. The concept of consumer includes within its fold not only the buyers of the goods and hirer of any services for consideration, but also the buyer of goods on a higher purchase basis, a bona fide user of the product obtained or loan or gift or otherwise obtained with the approval of the buyer or for earning a livelihood. However, the term does not include the dealer or commercial user. In relation to a service, the term consumer also includes the beneficiary of the service other than one hiring the services, provided it is availed of with the approval of the hirer. Moreover, a legal hire of a deceased consumer is also a consumer for the purpose of the CPA. He can sue the opposite party if the consumer who had bought the good or availed of the service has died. The National Commission has held that a person buying an auto rickshaw for earning his livelihood is a consumer and is therefore entitled to seek redress of his grievances against the supplier of the product having any defect. Case Mrs. Shanta Manuel of Bangalore purchased a photocopier for earning his livelihood after taking a loan from her relatives and friends. The machine soon developed some problems and had to be repaired six times in four months. When the manufacturer refused to replace the defected machine, Mrs. Manuel approached the Bangalore District Forum. The District Forum rejected the complaint holding that the copier had been purchased for commercial purpose. The Karnataka State Commission dismissed the appeal filed by the complainant. Mrs. Manuel then filed an appeal before the National Commission which held that the purchase can be said to be for a commercial purpose only if the goods are purchased for the use in some profit making activity engaged on a large scale and when there is a close and direct nexus between the purpose of goods and profit making activity. Grounds of complaint A complaint can be filed on any one of the following grounds. Any unfair trade practice or restrictive trade practice adopted by any trader, where the goods bought by him suffer from any defect, where the service hired or availed of by him suffer from any deficiency, where a trader has charged for the good mentioned in the complaint a price in excess of the price fixed under any law or displayed on the goods or its package, where any hazardous goods are being offered for sales in contravention of legal provisions regarding the display of information pertaining to contents, manner and effect of the use of such goods, and where any hazardous services are being offered by the service provider which could be injurious to life and safety. Relevant Concepts Certain concepts used in CPA have very wide amplitude. These include goods, service, defect in goods, deficiency in service, unfair trade practice and restrictive trade practices. These are specified under section 2, 1 clauses I, O, F, G, R, and NNN respectively of the CPA, also included in the glossary in e no more template. Appropriate Redress Agency 
a complaint is to be made to the appropriate district forum in a case where the value of the goods or service in question along with the compensation claimed if any is up to 20 lakhs of rupees moreover the appropriate district forum shall be the one within the local jurisdiction of whom the opposite party resides or carries on business or where the cause of action arises a complaint involving the pecuniary value of the good or services and the compensating claimed exceeding rupees 20 lakhs but not exceeding rupees 1 crore has to be made to the state commission of the state concerned a complaint involving a higher pecuniary value that is more than 1 crore can be made direct to the national commission located in new delhi procedure for filing of complaint the procedure for filing a complaint is simple the complainant has to make a written complaint containing full facts of the case, the causes of complaint and the relief sought. It should be supported by the relevant documents such as the cash memo, warranty card, medical prescription and the correspondence if any. The complaint duly verified by the complainant can be delivered in person or by post. No advocate is required to be engaged, it is optional. The complaint shall be accompanied by a nominal fee as prescribed on ncdrc.nic.in. On receipt of the complaint, the concerned forum can either admit it or reject it. However, before rejecting the complaint, an opportunity of being heard has to be given to the complainant. Moreover, the admissibility of the complaint has ordinarily to be decided within 21 days of receiving the complaint. Limitation period for filing complaint. A complaint filled after two years from the date on which the cause of action arose is not to be admitted by the consumer court concerned, except in the cases of compelling circumstances where the consumer court can condone the delay. Procedure for hearing. On admission of the complaint, the redress agency concerned is required to follow a simple procedure for its speedy disposal. A notice is to be issued to the opposite party directing him to state his version of the case within a period of 30 days. In the case of a complaint pertaining to any defect in the goods, the redress agency can refer the sample of the goods to an approved laboratory in order to find out whether the goods actually suffered from the alleged defect. A copy of the test report of the laboratory is to be supplied to the opposite party and can be used as a piece of evidence while deciding the case. A reasonable opportunity of hearing is to be given to both the parties. Where the opposite party does not show up to represent his case, within the given time, the redress agencies are empowered to pass an ex parte order in the complaint on the basis of the evidence brought to its notice by the complainant. Moreover, if the complainant fails to appear on the date of hearing, the complaint can be dismissed for the default or be decided on merits. Powers of consumer forums Although these forums are not courts, in the strict sense of the term, they are popularly known as consumer courts. They have the same powers as are vested in a civil court under the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 for conducting the proceedings before them. These powers are specified under Section 13.4 of the CPA. Any proceeding before a consumer forum is deemed to be a judicial proceedings within the meaning of Section 193 and 228 of the Indian Penal Code 1860. The proceedings before any redressal agency cannot be called in question in any court on the ground that the principles of natural justice have not been compiled with. Frivolous complaint. In order to prevent the misuse of protection measures by unsculpturous people, it is provided in the CPA that where a complaint instituted before a consumer code is found to be frivolous or vexatious, it shall be dismissed. Moreover, the complainant shall also be directed to pay the opposite party the cost of the case subject to a maximum of rupees 10,000. Relief available. If the consumer court is satisfied about the genuineness of the complaint, it can issue one or more of the following directions to the opposite party. First, to remove the defect in the goods or the deficiency in the service. Second, to replace the defective product with the new one free from any defect. Third, to refund the price paid for the product or the charges paid for the services. Fourth, to pay a reasonable amount of compensation for any loss or injury suffered by the consumer due to the negligence of the opposite party. Fifth, to pay punitive damages in appropriate circumstances. Sixth, to discontinue the unfair or restrictive trade practices and not to repeat it in future. Seventh, 
not to offer the hazardous goods for sale. Eighth, to withdraw the hazardous goods from sales. Ninth, to cease manufacturing of hazardous goods and to desist from offering hazardous services. Tenth, to pay an amount to be credited to the consumer welfare fund or any other organization or person and to be utilized in the prescribed manner. Eleventh, to issue corrective advertisement to neutralize the effect of a misleading advertisement. And twelfth, is to pay adequate cost to the appropriate party. Filing of appeal. Any person aggrieved from any order of the lower forum or commission can prefer an appeal before the higher forum or commission within 30 days of the passing of the order. The delay in filing the appeal can be condoned by the appellate authority if it is satisfied that there was a sufficient cause for the delay. Thus, in a case decided by the district forum, the appeal can be filed before the state commission and therefore the order of the state commission can be challenged before the national commission and no further. The Supreme Court can be approached in appeal only in those cases where the complaint involves a claim of over rupees 1 crore and were therefore directly filed before the National Commission. In order to discourage non-serious and unnecessary appeals, the 2002 Amendment Act has provided that no appeal by a person who is required to pay any amount in terms of the order of the district forum shall be entertained by the State Commission unless the appellant has deposited 50% of the amount or rupees 25,000 whichever is less. However, in the case of appeals before the National Commission and the Supreme Court, the appellant is required to submit an amount of rupees 35,000 and rupees 50,000 respectively. Disposal of the cases. The Act provides a time limit of 90 days for the disposal of a complaint where the case does not involve any product testing or analysis in a research laboratory and 150 days where it requires such a testing or analysis. Moreover, an appeal before the State Commission or the National Commission has to be disposed of within 90 days. No adjournment shall ordinarily be granted by the forums unless sufficient reason is recorded for the same. Moreover, for expeditious disposal of the cases, consumer courts have been vested with additional powers including bars on transfer of cases, passing an ex parte order or an interim order while the case is pending before them. Enforcement of orders. The orders of the redress agencies are enforceable as a decree of a civil court. The property of the defaulting person can be attached. The collector of the district shall recover the amount due to a person as areas of the land revenue where any of the orders including an interim order of the consumer forum is not complied with. Non-compliance of any order passed by any consumer forum shall be treated as an offence punishable with imprisonment for a minimum term of one month to maximum of three years and or fine ranging from Rs 2000 to Rs 10,000.